In this video, we learn about parameters in Azure Bicep. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Reldos. In the last Bicep video, we set up a development environment and deployed a storage account. We're taking things a little further in this video by reviewing parameters along with Bicep data types. Before that, please take a second to show your appreciation for these videos by subscribing, liking, sharing with a friend or casual acquaintance, and clicking the bell icon for notifications of new content. If you'd like to learn more about Windows Virtual Desktop, check out my course, Zero to Hero with Windows Virtual Desktop on Udemy.com. Back at it, we're going to get into parameters shortly, but we have some formatting items to take care of. I know slides may not be as exciting as getting hands-on, but trust me, this information is important to taking your bicep game to the next level. And the slides are in this awesome portrait PowerPoint format I recently discovered. Let's get started with data types. There are a lot of key value pairs in a bicep file. Matter of fact, that's almost all we create in a bicep file. But there are different types of values in the key value pair. In the last video, we had to define the type of storage. The key was kind and the value was storage v2. Notice the single quotes around storage v2. That indicates the value is a string. There are other data types including an integer, a number with no quotes. If quotes are added, it becomes a string. Booleans have a value of true or false. Again, no quotes. We also have secure strings. These are just like strings, but the value is not saved or logged in any deployment history. We'll use these for things like administrative passwords on a VM. For a secure string, the at symbol followed by the word secure and then open and closing brackets is the modifier that indicates the string is secure. An array is a list of values. There are two examples on the screen. One is a list of integers, that one has no quotes. The other is a list of strings. An array starts and ends with square brackets. There are no key value pairs, it's just a list of values. And finally, we have objects. An object is simply a list of key value pairs. Everything in a bicep file and an ARM template for that matter is an object. The one special property of an object is that the value in a key value pair can be another object. When we created the storage account, we added a SKU name as a value for SKU. The value for SKU is an object because the SKU has a second property of tier. The nesting of objects is one of the things that can make ARM templates tedious to work with. Bicep abstracts most of that out, but they still do exist. Let's move on to parameters. In the previous video, we created two storage accounts. The storage account name was a value of the resource. Because storage account names have to be globally unique, we had to change the inline value of the storage account name when we created the second storage account. That isn't a problem for small templates, but for large implementations, that could be problematic. Parameters make the templates portable by providing a single location for settings that will change with each deployment. With parameters, it's easy to reuse a template. A value is assigned to the parameter once and then referenced throughout the file. Parameters also give us input validation. We can set conditions for the accepted parameter. For example, we can set a minimum and maximum length on a string or add an array of allowed values. We'll use parameter decorators or modifiers to restrict the parameter input or set default values. The allowed decorator is an array of allowed values. A description explains how to use the parameter, while metadata is a custom property that can be equivalent to a description. The minimum and maximum length apply to arrays or strings, while the minimum or maximum value apply to integers. The secure modifier marks the parameter as secure, so the value is not exposed in history or logs. The demo coming up will pick up where the last one left off. We'll start with our storage account bicep template and add some parameters. We'll add parameters for the storage account name and we'll add tags. We'll also include default value for the tags and the storage account kind. Let's get started in VS Code with our storage account bicep template. If you don't have that, check the link below for a copy. Here we are in VS Code with our storage account template. I'll make this file available on my GitHub repo if you need a starter file. The link will be below. Let's start with a parameter for the storage account name. Go to the top of the file. Parameters should be at the beginning. We'll add some spaces for the parameters. Parameters start with the identifier param, spelled P-A-R-A-M. After that, we need to give it a name. 
This example will use the name STG ACT name. This is the symbolic name for the parameter. We'll use this name to reference the value of the parameter in the file. You can name it anything you want. We still have a red squiggly line. Let's see what it's asking for. We need to assign a type. This is a name, so let's give it the type string. The red squiggly lines are gone and we now have a parameter but an Azure storage account name has to be between three and 24 characters long. It's a string, so we can use the min and max length for input validation to make sure that the name is between three and 24 characters. Decorators have to go before the parameter. Let's add the min length modifier. Here it shows we need an integer, so we'll add three. That will be the minimum length. We'll go to the next line and add the max length. Use the at symbol, max length, and that is 24. Now the storage account name has to be between three and 24 characters. Now that we have the parameter, we have to update the resource to use the parameter. Go to name under the storage resource, remove the value of the name, and replace it with the parameter STG ACT name. And IntelliType picks it up, so we just have to hit tab. Notice there's no parentheses, just the parameter name. Let's add the parameter for the storage account SKU next. We'll add a new parameter, add param, followed by the name. This example will use STG ACT SKU. That's also a string. We don't want someone mistyping the value or maybe you want to limit the options available. We'll use the allowed decorator. Let's add that above the new parameter. Add sign and allowed. If we tab, it will auto add the opening and closing parenthesis. Next, we have to add a list of allowed values, more specifically, an array of values. Since this is an array, not a single item, we need to add it between square brackets. Add an opening and closing square bracket. Between the square bracket, we'll add the list of allowed values. I'll include this list of storage account names in one of the links below, or you can just add a couple. Be sure to include standard LRS for the next step, however. If you've worked with ARM templates, you may be used to putting commas between items in an array. That's not required for a BICEP file. Let's add a default value next. A default value is what's used if it's not overridden during the deployment. We'll set the storage account SKU to the default value of standard LRS. We can override that with another value from the list when we deploy the template, but we don't have to. We can leave it blank and standard LRS will be used. To set the value, we simply add an equal sign after the string and add the default value. I'm going to copy and paste that in. Next, and again, we have to update the resource so it will use the parameter. Remove the SKU name standard LRS and replace it with STG ACT SKU. There it is in the list. Next, we'll add a tag parameter and update our resources to include tags. Start by adding a new parameter called STG tags. This time the data type will be an object. A tag is one or more key value pair, so it has to be an object. We'll add a default value, so add an equal sign at the end. After that, we'll need an opening and closing squiggly bracket. Now we'll add our objects, the tag and value pairs. This example will use environment lab and department IT.
Next, we need to add the tags to the resource. This was an optional setting that we didn't use previously. Go to Resources and at the end, add tags and pass in the STG tags value. We're done modifying the file, so be sure to save. That all looks good, except for one thing. We created a parameter for the storage account name, but didn't include a default value. This is on purpose. Storage account names have to be unique, so adding a default value wouldn't be helpful after the first deployment. We're going to pass that in along with updating the storage account SKU at the deployment. So let's do that next. Open up the terminal and be sure to log in. We went over deployments with PowerShell and the command line interface in the last video. In this video, we're going to stick with just PowerShell. Be sure you're logged into Azure before we start and the cursor is at the file location or you'll have to specify the path in the following commands. Let's start by creating a resource group. Use the new AZ resource group command, passing in the name and location, bicep test RG and central US for this example. Once that's done, let's deploy the new storage account. Start with a new AZ resource group deployment command, adding the name of the deployment and the resource group we just created. After that, add the template file parameter. Passing in the name of the file we just updated. Next, we need to add the storage account name. We're going to pass this in as part of the deployment. Add a dash STG ACT name. And if everything's working correctly, that should autocomplete. We'll give it a name. For this example, I'll use CIR storage 22331. Remember, this has to be unique, so I just added a couple random characters at the end. You can name your storage account whatever you'd like. We also want to change the storage type to standard ZRS. Add a dash followed by STG ACT SKU. After that, add the value standard underscore ZRS. Once finished, hit enter. It looks like something went wrong. The deployment validation failed. I actually did this on purpose. The storage account SKU is typed in wrong and does not match the allowed value. That's an example of how input validation with the allowed decorator will prevent somebody from adding a value that's not allowed. Let's update the value and run it again. There we go. And if you get a different error message, one indicating that it cannot find the storage account name parameter, try updating the AZ module. I ran into this problem with the 5.6 AZ module and updating to the latest version fixed the issue. Keep in mind, BICEP is still in preview. Let's update the command and run it again. This may take a second to finish. This is a good point to pause and come back once it's done. Once finished, let's get the account and verify it's what we expect. Run the get AZ storage account command passing in the resource group and storage account name. The 
The name looks correct. Let's pipe the output into a format where we can see all the details. FL for format list. I'll make this a little bigger. Here the storage account and resource group is correct. And we can see that the tags have been applied. It doesn't show the skew with this view. We can view that with the same command, only outputting extended properties. Let's assign the value of the command to a variable called STG. From here, we can get the skew by getting the variable. Dot skew. Dot name. And there it is. That's how to create and use parameters in a bicep file. I hope you found this video useful. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.